So rejection is the immune system recognizing something as foreign. And so the most common um, way that we s see this now in our clinical lives is in organ transplantation. So if we put a kidney in from a cadaver, somebody who's died, or a liver or a heart, um, the immune system immediately sees that as foreign and tries to eliminate it. And so that's why we have to spend a lot of our research careers trying to develop drugs that will prevent the immune system from rejecting these vital organs after transplantation. We don't know all of the rules um, about stem cell transplants, but we do know a lot. And we know that uh, these cells are foreign. They come from different individuals often. And even when they come from your own tissue, they're certainly not going to be the same uh, as the original tissue after you do things to them outside the body. And so all the evidence would suggest that uh, embryonic stem cell derived tissues will be as immunogenic as a foreign kidney or a foreign liver. Some people have asked whether um, embryonic stem cells are less likely to be rejected. And I think the data in animal models suggests yes, that embryonic stem cells are what we would call immune privileged, that the immune system doesn't find a lot of things on those cells foreign and therefore doesn't attack them. It would be great, except remember that our job in this business is to take that embryonic stem cell and to try to recreate an adult tissue. And as we move the cell through those stages, it takes on all of the characteristics now of the adult cell, and the immune system's not blinded anymore. So at the end, the immune system recognizes that embryonic stem cell derived islet the same way it would recognize a foreign islet. And so my guess is that the immune system will be smarter than we are, and that although we'll try our best to recreate the perfect cell, whether it be at IPS or SCHT, that at the end of the day, the immune system will find some differences. And so I think we'll need some immune modulation, we'll need some drugs, at least short term, even in those settings. One of the great advantages that we have in cell therapy, and especially stem cell derived therapy, is we might be able to do a lot of the manipulation outside the body. So instead of having to give the, all the drugs to the person who gets the cells, we might be able, during the time in which we're getting those cells to develop into an islet cell or a heart cell or a neuron, we might be able to move, change those cells a little bit, make them less susceptible to the immune system. So it actually might be a lot easier at the end of the day if we can do some stuff outside the body before the cells ever get inside the body. I think we will work, continue to work towards a setting in which we will be able to uh, have a transplant, take drugs for a short period of time, and then be able to go off to drugs and live a drug-free existence and the organ will be fine. We'll be looking back 50 years from now and we'll look at this error like we did in the last century and the Industrial Revolution, the kinds of things that we will have done through medical um, research and medical intervention to make people's lives better. And what better way to do it than to replace the parts that go bad? You know, this is a system in which we have so many working parts. If we could fix that kidney that went bad or that pancreas that went bad or the few cells in the brain that went bad, uh, and I think cell transplant can do that, that'll be pretty exciting.